This is Twit. We have the rat dispenser. Uh, <laughs> it's probably worth no with worth taking just a moment to reinforce the need to never, and I mean really never, click to open an attachment received in an email. Any email, even it's from even if it's from your mom. Okay, now cybersecurity experts from HP said they discovered a new strain of JavaScript malware that criminals are using as a way to infect systems and then deploy dangerous remote access Trojans. In other words, the you know remote access Trojan, RAT, R-A-T, thus the RAT dispenser. But I put, Leo, cybersecurity experts from HP in quotes. Um, because, right. well, try going to, and I'm serious, ThreatResearch.ext.hp.com. Okay. The HP Wolf Security Blog. And you got there somehow. They yeah. must have just fixed this. Oh, it was broken? The, <laughs> oh, yes. Look look at the at, 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 in the show notes. I've got the, the TLS certificate that both Firefox Oops. and Google were displaying this morning. Uh, um. I had to fight my way through uh, <laughs> in order to get there. Keep your keep your keep your uh, sights up to date, kids. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Why is it working for you? Threat research. Let me. Uh, I mean, they may have just f fixed their certificate. Let me look at their certificate here. Yeah, it came right up now. Yeah, they fixed. That's it. Yeah. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I can't. I, I, th that's you know, someone must have told them, probably because they were in the news. But this morning, uh, I got both Firefox and Chrome refused, and what I couldn't understand was that the certificate that they were serving expired on March eighteenth of twenty twenty one. Yeah, so I mean, this is from March fifteenth, twenty twenty one. So they got a new one. But the, maybe they didn't apply it. It goes through the 2022. They maybe they forgot, or I don't know. Right. So they, they were on. So they got so the that certificate. certificate. They probably right. didn't install it on the same cycle. But Leo, but the okay, site should have been down not, since last March. Correct. It could not have been <laughs> offline for ten months. No. So somebody something weird. Some, they, it was a uh, what do they call yeah. that? A regression. <laughs> yes, we do call it a regression. Yes. It was it was definitely that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, HP explains because they do have good researchers. He, uh, they said as embarrassing right as that at, is. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I mean, and it's why I took a screenshot of it. It's, it's like so what? Embarrassing. No. That's and, so and then I thought maybe Firefox. So I went over to Chrome, and Chrome wouldn't show it either. Whoopsies. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, threat actors. They said are always looking for stealthy ways of delivering malware without being detected. In this article, we describe how attackers are using an evasive JavaScript loader that we call Rat Dispenser to distribute remote access Trojans and information stealers with only, and this is what's really amazing, an 11% detection rate, meaning one out of 10 gets flagged, one out of 10 instances. An 11% detection rate, rat dispenser appears, they wrote, to be, a, a, to be effective at evading security controls and delivering malware. In total, we identified eight malware families distributed using this malware during 2021. All the payloads were rats remote access Trojans, designed to steal information and give attackers control over victim devices. As with most attacks involving JavaScript malware, Rat Dispenser is used to gain an initial foothold on a system before launching secondary malware that establishes control over the compromised device. Interestingly, they said, our investigation found that Rat Dispenser is predominantly being used as a dropper, 
in 94% of samples analyzed, meaning the malware doesn't communicate over the network to deliver a malicious payload. In other words, you know, it just, it, it, um, uh, it, it incorporates it. The variety in malware families, many of which can be purchased or downloaded freely from underground marketplaces, and the preference of malware operators to drop their payloads, suggests that the authors of Rat Dispenser may be operating under a malware-as-a-service business model. Wonderful. Okay, so the infection chain begins with a user receiving an email containing, and I read this, and I just like, really? This is still happening? A malicious attachment. It's the classic double file extension, you know, something like orderinformation.text.js, you know, which we've all known about for how long? Yet it still works. It still isn't being displayed properly. It's still being handled by our email agents. So the unwitting user simply needs to double click the file to run the malware. What I wanna know is how is it that any of today's email clients will run such a file with a simple, with a simple double click. This morning, I just had to promise my firstborn child to view this report from HP because their once legitimate TLS certificate had expired. You know, I had this like, you know, <laughs> warning, warning, do not, do, do not trust this oh, site. Oh, God. Go, go, go back now. And it's like, no, well, I looked at the URL. No, it's right. And it's like, you know, and I pressed advanced and it said, are you sure you're advanced? Yes. Okay. <laughs> do you have any children? Will you? Are you planning to? Can we have them? <laughs> right. Oh, my God. But no. You know, dot text, dot JS. Oh, wonderful. Run the code. Oh, gosh. You know, what is happening? Yeah. We've got, we clearly have our priorities backwards. Yeah. Oh, my God. So HB notes that network defenders can prevent infection, you know, like at the enterprise level by blocking executable file attachment file types from passing through their email gateways. For example, JavaScript or VBScript. What a concept. Defenders, they said, can also interrupt the execution of the malware by changing the default file handler for JavaScript files, only allowing digitally signed scripts to run or disabling Windows script host. You know, okay, but I ask why any of that is even necessary. It won't protect anyone outside of those enterprise boundaries, right? The standard default is you click on something.js. We don't care where it came from. We don't care how it got into your system. You want it. You got it. It's crazy. When the malware runs, the JavaScript decodes itself at runtime because, of course, it's all heavily obfuscated. It's just a bunch of, you know, slash hex codes that behind some evals. And that writes a VB script file to the temp folder using command.exe. To do this, command.exe, pro the process, is passed a long chained argument, parts of which are written to the new file using the echo function. Then the VB script file runs to download. Oh, the, the, it is downloading the malware payload from, so from somewhere. If it was downloaded successfully, it's executed. And the VB script file is deleted. So it's like, oh, you know, we got what we wanted. Now delete this. Again, how, how can it be that you're not allowed to visit a site whose certificate has expired, yet click on a link in email? Run some code? No problem. The initial JavaScript downloader is obfuscated and contains several eval functions, as I mentioned. One of the eval calls is a function that returns a long string, which is decoded by another function. And it's clearly effective, since only, as I said, about one out of every 10 instances, well, wait, 11%, that's one out of nine, are now being de detected after many months of successful exploitation. 
Over the past three months, HP said the malware had been used to drop at least eight different rat strains, such as STT rat, WSH, we know what that stands for, rat, Adwind, Formbook, Remcos, Panda Stealer, Goo Loader, and Ratty. <laughs> Love the names. So as I started wow. out, yeah, the Ratty Rat. As I started out saying, it's worth just refreshing the strength of the prohibition against ever clicking on anything that is received in email. Really, I mean, it's the, the, these guys are clever. They're going out of their way to avoid the protections built into our systems. It's it's dispiriting that it is still possible to do this today, but it is. <laughs>